Hey guys, I'm RNG Gamer. I play all my games randomly. Today we're going to be going over my PlayStation 5 collection. It's a newer console, so there's only about 34 games here. And since I play everything randomly, I haven't played a lot of these yet. So I'm going to rely on you guys out there to let me know which ones of these are your favorites or which ones I should wish to play next. I don't get to choose what I play. Like I said, everything's random, but at least I can build up some enthusiasm about it. Also, if you enjoy my content, like the video, subscribe, leave a comment below. I answer like every one of them. Hit the bell notification so you get notified when a new video comes out. They come out every Wednesday, those are gameplay videos, and Saturdays, those are collection videos, like the where we go over all the stuff you see behind me. Let's dive right into it. Up first, we have a game that costs $3.29. I just picked it up because I needed to use like my $5 monthly coupon at GameStop. And it's 3D Mini Golf. I don't know why I got this. I watched like a documentary about golf on Netflix and I got all interested about golf all of a sudden. And then like my enthusiasm waned, so to speak. But I ended up with all these like golf games that I bought that like when I play 10 years from now, I'll be like, why did I buy all these freaking golf games? Anyway, there's one for you. <laughs> this one's called Absolove End of Gods. I don't even know what this is. It looks like a survival horror game. It says, steeped in Norse mythology, award-winning Absolove is a survival horror and sci-fi adventure unlike anything you have ever experienced. I doubt that. <laughs> If it was something really, truly unique, I think we would have heard about it. But anyway, I picked this up, I guess, at, at GameStop. It's in one of those, like, resealer bags where they're like, it's new, even though it was, like, unwrapped, whatever the case. Let me know if this is any good, guys. This looks like a really cool one-bit game. A good buddy of mine played this and just absolutely loved it, so I had to pick it up on the PS5. I haven't played it yet, of course, like, half the stuff down here. But it's Astronite. It has a really, really, really cool aesthetic on the back of it, you can see. It's like it's kind of like a platforming game. But I like those one-bit looking games. They're very striking. This is one that I just finished, spoiler alert, and I am doing a huge video on this game. It has taken me like over a month to work on. After editing this video, I have to go back to editing that one. <laughs> but it's Atari 50. This is a really amazing compilation of like the history of Atari over the last 50 years. I'm not going to say too much. You need to go watch that video when it comes out because I've put like a, probably about 100 hours into editing it so far. And good lord, capturing the gameplay footage, woo! Filled up a whole hard drive. I'm also playing this one right now on my gameplay videos on... Sorry, something just fell off the shelf. <laughs> On my gameplay videos on Wednesdays, we've been playing through The Binding of Isaac on the PS5. And this is my version of it. It's the, I forget what they call this edition, but it's just the good old Binding of Isaac. Let me take it out of the, it's hard to get out of this box, I have to say. There we go. The Binding of Isaac, Repentance. I don't know how I feel about this one yet. Binding of Isaac, I used to say it was my favorite game, but Repentance kind of rebalanced everything and changed a lot, and I don't know how I feel about it yet. I need to put some more time into it. Also, this box has like glitter on the back of it, and all this crap's like falling off. It's like all over the floor, it's on the shelf. For something that we waited so long, I think I pre-ordered this and it took like 18 months for it to come. They could have given us like a little bit higher quality. And they could have waited an extra month and put all the patches on the freaking disc. Because as soon as I put it in, they're like, the new patch came out that rebalanced the game. And I'm like, dude, I bought like two collector's editions of this. And now they're like, not complete. So annoying. I was super hyped when this came out. It looked really cool. It has a neat art style. And I was like, I'm going to wait for it to go on sale or get cheap. And it's like 10 bucks new at GameStop. Like right now, you can go get this but it's Chris Tales. I think this is made by a South American company, so they may have been going with a pun like Crystallis with this. Like, 
Crystallis, which is, I believe, Spanish for crystals, right? Or multiple crystals. <laughs> but this is supposed to be really cool. It has a neat kind of cartoony aesthetic to it. I think it's one of these, like, side-scrolling kind of RPGs, maybe. Let me know about this one. This game didn't get great reviews. And I didn't really hear anything about it, but I saw, like, somebody had it in a compilation of, like, hidden gems that they did, and it looked really cool, and I bought it on Amazon for, like, five bucks or something. It's called Curved Space. You see the back of it. I mean, it looks really cool. I think it's kind of like almost a, a shmup with like Super Mario Galaxy mechanics where you like encircle a planet. But I don't know, it just, it looked cool. I can't remember. Let me know if this one's any good. I'm kind of looking forward to this one. I buy like every game in this series and I've only played one of them and it kind of like crashed on me at the end and I wasn't able to finish it. So I had to watch like the ending on YouTube, which is lame. This part of the Dark Pictures Anthology and this is House of Ashes. I'll probably just keep picking these up just based off the fact that super massive games the developer of this did. Uh, Until Dawn, that was the name of it. I loved Until Dawn. So I've been buying all these games solely based on that fact. <laughs> This one I ordered from Special Reserve Games. It took a long freaking time to get there. And then I think they just released like a retail version first that came out. So I paid extra and waited longer for this. But it's Death's Door. This is supposed to be pretty sweet. I don't know much about it. I think it's like kind of a somber sort of over the head action game. But it might have like some roguelite elements to it. I don't know. Maybe it's just a good story. But it looks pretty cool. I was... The second they announced this, I, I decided to pre-order it. So ah, I'm still kind of bummed that they put it out on retail and I pay, overpaid for this. Arcane Studios, who put out this next game. I have never played a game of theirs that I really liked. I have to say that, guys. I've, I've played the first Dishonored and I did not like it. I played Prey and I did not like it. I have Dishonored 2 in the backlog, but this is like the next game they did, and it's Death Loop. And this one, like game of the year from a lot of sources, and I don't know how I feel about it. It's a first person shooter, like Groundhog Day thing, or like when you die, it resets the day, and you're supposed to like learn more and more about the environment to make it further. But this woman up here is like an assassin who's constantly chasing you around, and it's supposed to be a lot of fun. I don't know, we'll find out. They just released Redfall and it's like getting destroyed in the comments. I'm like, maybe everybody will see what I'm seeing now. <laughs> like these games are like buggy messes and they just like don't work and the gameplay loops aren't that fun. But hopefully the gameplay loop and death loop is pretty decent. This is from Red Art Games and it's kind of like a spin-off to a game that hasn't even come out yet. It's Iuden Chronicle, and this is Iuden Chronicle Rising. These are like spiritual successors to the Suikoden series. So you can recruit like a bunch of characters, like, like over a hundred characters to join you on your little RPG adventure. I'll show you the back, but it's kind of hard to see through this cellophane, but it's got a beautiful art style. I'm really excited about this one when I get to it. I'm kind of waiting on the first one to come in though, or the, the, the mainline game, Iuden Chronicle Chronicles? Or I, not stupid, Iuden Chronicle Chronicles? great someone will, like use that chronicle chronicles <laughs> but i'm waiting on it to come out first and play it before i play this or maybe i should play this one first i don't know let me know what do you think people out there that have played this should i play this one go ahead and at least keep it in the backlog to maybe randomly get picked here's the game everybody was like waiting for in this collection it was anticipated for a long time it was game of the year for me and pretty much everybody else it did not disappoint i put like 100 hours into it it's Elden Ring. Everybody knows this game. It was super hyped, and it's like the last game I can remember that like lived up to the hype and even surpassed it. Unbelievable game. Truly incredible. I loved it. This is another one of these like survival horror games that it feels like it's going to be a $300 game one day, but like nobody knows about it now. Phobia St. De Dinfna, Dinfna Hotel. St. Dinfna. Good Lord. Look at that. Dinfana. D-I-N-F-N-A. Whatever the case. It looks cool on the cover, but it says check into the St. Dinfna, Dinfna Hotel. Explore a decadent hotel across different timelines to uncover the dark history of a fanatical cult and your role in their plans in this twisting narrative full of puzzles, conspiracies, and otherworldly horrors. 
interesting. This was cheap, man. I probably paid like 20 bucks for it or less. Maybe it was free, I don't know. I'm sure it was in one of my pickups videos. Let me know how much I paid for this, I can't remember. This one got a bunch of good reviews, but apparently it's just kind of like a game where you walk around and talk. And so it's set in the Roman Empire and people either loved it or hated it. I picked it up at GameStop. I think it was the second PlayStation 5 game I ever bought. It was The Forgotten City, and it's once again still sealed in one of those like fake things that GameStop does, but I think you just investigate like a murder. It's a, it was a $20 game new, which I don't know, but I saw reviews, people were giving it like nines out of 10 and stuff. Some people were giving it like threes, and they're like, you just walk around, you can finish the game in three hours. Three hours is perfect for me. That's how long I want to play a game. <laughs> I've got so many to play. If you can pack a really good experience into three hours, man, do it. Don't pad it out. This was on clearance at GameStop and it was just like a buck or two or maybe three. It was super cheap. It's called Foreclosed. I don't know anything about this. I look at the back and it's just like comic book stuff, like clips. Let me know what this game is. I don't know if this is a virtual novel or if it's a real-time strategy game. I have no idea. Let me know, guys. This was like the runner up to game of the year for everybody last year. Uh, it's supposed to be an amazing game, I haven't played it. I played the first one and like 100%ed it, but it's God of War Ragnarok. It's still sealed, I'll get to it. This might have to be a gold star game. A gold star game is where like if I beat enough games, I earn a gold star and I get to pick a game to play out of my collection. I usually save it for stuff like this. GameStop was doing a clearance sale and it was like 50% off clearance. I picked this up, it's 10 bucks, it's still sealed and it's Griok Memories of Azure. I don't really know much about this, but I couldn't say no to a $10 game that looked like this on the back. I mean, it looks really decent. So that's cool. Let me know about this one. Is this any good? It's done by Team 17. At least they published it. They're the ones that do like the Worms franchise. <laughs> Here's another Red Art Games game. God, that's so worried. That sounds so bad. Here's another game from Red Art Games. And I pre-ordered this. It took a long time to get here, which is strange because usually Red Art Games is pretty quick. But it's Heidelberg 1693. They put it in this cool like slip cover. Of course, I haven't played this. But it's it looks like it's like a brutally difficult side-scrolling kind of action game. I don't know if it's a Metroidvania or if it's more like just Castlevania, but it looks really cool. I had to get this one when they announced it. I reviewed this on the channel. This is a survival horror game. I played it last Halloween and uh, it was called Akai. And it's like a, a Japanese Edo period survival horror game. It's more kind of like a walking simulator. It's one of those where you have to like run and hide from the bad guys rather than trying to fight them. Um, but I thought this was an okay game. I, it was like a five out of 10 sort of game. You can't really see anything on the back. It's just like black. <laughs> You actually see it better on camera than I can in person, guys. It's interesting because the lights are like shining on it. So there you go. But it was pretty good. The uh, the dialogue of the main character, she's like a shrine maiden. It, it was done by like a, a Californian actress and her speaking was very stilted and strange. You could tell she was like reading off a sheet and not really like embodying what was going on in the game and her diction was very perfect everything was spoken like she was reading for a foreign language course or something and the translation was also kind of bad so the words were like awkwardly <laughs> put together but anyway it was an okay game i feel like this is another one of those games that's going to be super expensive one day or maybe it's two dollars who knows <laughs> haven't played this one yet i like this series a lot i'm looking forward to this one it's Life is Strange, True Colors. The first two Life is Strange games were Life is Strange and Life is Strange Before the Storm were like heartbreaking games. I'm sure this is no different. Uh, but they're just like narrative adventure games. You just walk around and talk to people and find little clues to advance the story and things like that. But they're, they're fun. I think they're good games. I like them. I have not played this. I have not played this spinoff. And I've only really played one game in this series. And I have to say I'm in love with it. It's part of the Yakuza series, which they're rebranding into the Like a Dragon series, but this is Lost Judgment. It's the sequel to Judgment, which is like told from the point of view of the, the, the good guys, the detectives uh, from the Yakuza series. And so I'm looking forward to this one. What I don't know is if, is this silly? Does this like retain the silliness of the Yakuza series? Or is it like really serious? Cause I hope it, it's kind of silly. It looks extremely serious. I mean, Look at that, that dude looks pissed. 
Here's another one from Supermassive Games, the people I mentioned earlier. This one's supposed to be really good. It's not part of the Dark Pictures, Dark Pictures Anthology. I think it's supposed to be like a sort of a semi-sequel to uh, Until Dawn, but it's The Quarry, and this looks really cool. I'm really looking forward to this one. Hopefully it gets picked for me to play this October. In October, I only pick random games that are horror games. So that's one of the rules of my random thing. But So I go through horror games pretty quickly because I might play like 10 or 12 of them every October. Another horror game, I did not play this in October. I was upset about this because I thought the Gold Edition was going to have all the DLC on disc and they just gave you a download code. And I'm mad at Capcom for that. But it's Resident Evil Village. The first half of this game was like a bona fide 10 out of 10. The second half was like an 8 out of 10. So I'd say this is like a 9 out of 10 game. I really loved it. If the beginning of it, if it had maintained its energy and its atmosphere for the whole game that it had for the first half, I mean, it could have been like the best Resident Evil game of all time. Maybe one of the best games of all time. It was pretty incredible, the first half of this. I do recommend this one. The second half is still great. Just pales in comparison to the first half. Picked this up recently in some like, I think it was a buy two, get one free deal or something like that at GameStop. It was in the pickups video. Go find it, let me know how much I paid for it. But it's done by uh, House Marquee, the people that did like Resogun and stuff on the PS5, which is just a, like a simple little arcade game. They were known for that. And then they put out this huge like triple A third person roguelite game called Returnal. And a lot of people had this as their game of the year like two years ago, but I think it's one of these like Groundhog Day similar things and you're trying to progress a little bit further each time on each run. Like I said, it's a roguelite. It's supposed to be really cool. I'm looking forward to it. A lot of people have said they really hate this game though. So we'll find out, we'll find out. I was pumped for this when it like came out and I just didn't pick it up and it like before I knew it, it was a $20 game. So maybe it totally sucks, who knows? But it's Scarlet Nexus. I think this is kind of like, I know it's sort of an RPG, but is it like a Souls-like? Is it like Dark Souls or is it just a standard JRPG? It's got kind of a dark aesthetic to it, although the back makes it look just like your standard kind of RPG or JRPG. Bankai named Bankai. Bankai. Bankai Namco, Bandai Namco put this out and they did do like the Dark Souls stuff, at least at some point. So. Um, Maybe it's in that vein. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know. Remind me of this. I get this in code vein mixed up in my head. So this is supposed to be one of the best shoot 'em ups to come out in years. Red Art Games put it out. I'm so happy to have it. It's Soft Star. This is in a recent pickups video and it looks incredible. I am super pumped to play this. I cannot wait. I know it's going to be fantastic. I'm a huge shoot 'em ups fan and everybody's just praising this like up and down. So really looking forward to that. This is a part of the Shin Megami Tensei series, which is like where Persona comes from and stuff. And this is Soul Hackers 2. I've never played any of the Soul Hackers games, but I do like the Shin Megami Tensei series a lot, especially Persona, like everybody else. Who doesn't? I've not played this. It got decent reviews, like seven out of 10 kind of reviews, but my it was on my wish list kind of like, and eh, maybe I'll find it somewhere. My wife got it for me for, I think Christmas or my birthday or something, so. Looking forward to this. These kind of like 7 out of 10 JRPGs can get kind of samey, but at least the Shin Megami Tensei series like tries to mix it up a little bit, which is nice. Thanks, Atlas. This is just in like a pickups video not that long ago, Steel Rising. This is a Dark Souls spinoff set in the French Revolution. If the Re French Revolution was like steampunk mechs, that are women robots <laughs> or something like that. People are like, it's great, it's such a cool game. I asked people what they thought about it in the comments and everybody was like, this game's amazing. So it looks really cool. I'm looking forward to this one a lot too. People have been asking me a lot about the Tales series and how I feel about the Tales series. And I've played several games in it. And honestly, I've only finished like two of them. I finished Tales of Zillia on the PS3, which I thought was like, okay. And I finished, um, Tales of Vesperia on the Xbox 360. I thought that was a great game. Some of the other ones, people are like, you should try this. I was like, I, I played that. I didn't think it was very good. But this one's supposed to be great. It's Tales of Arise. It's the last Tales game I've picked up. The last several I just kind of like skipped over because I was not, they didn't look very good to me. 
I think they're fine. I think the stories are a little, can be a little long-winded and kind of like meh, and the characters can be kind of meh, and the combat, that like strategy, action, RPG, I'm kind of like, Ugh. I just end up button mashing through everything and just like winning easily. So I'm like, why learn all the combos and stuff when you just like hit the X button over and over again? <laughs> Hopefully they sort that out with this one. There's a little bit more involved with it, but it does look really cool. This is a very, very recent video. I think maybe like last week's video. It's Tamisia. It's another one of these Dark Souls kind of like ripoff games, but everybody says this one's great too. It's really short, like you can beat it in 20 hours and I'm like really excited about that, but it looks cool. This is a bad cover though. They should have done a better cover with this. I don't think this is gonna grab anybody's attention on the shelf. Not that anybody's like buying video games off shelves anymore anyway. This one I did not know about and when I I saw Radical Reggie, I think, do a video on like some survival horror games you gotta play, and he's like, this is like the modern Resident Evil. I was like, I gotta get that. It's Tormented Souls, and I'm pumped about this one. This one might be a, a gold star game as well. It says, classic survival horror is back, and I love hearing that. My favorite survival horror game of all the ones I've played, and I will admit, I've not played anything in the Silent Hill series. I have them all, I just haven't gotten to them yet. I'm trying to, Wait till Silent Hill 1 gets picked randomly before I play any of the others. Might take a while. That might have to be a Gold Star game too. But my favorite survival horror game of all time is probably like Resident Evil 1. I just love that like slow atmosphere and the pre-rendered backgrounds and stuff. And I think this is kind of like that. So really looking forward to it. Here's another one from Special Reserve Games that I paid like too much for and waited extra long and it like a retail copy was released before they even shipped this to me. It's Trek to Yomi. It looks really cool. It looks like a Kurosawa movie, like Seven Samurai. And it's like all black and white, very striking visually. But I think it's just kind of like an exploratory hack and slash game with like a strong narrative focus, but I'm not sure. It looks really cool and I'm glad I bought it, even if Devolver and Special Reserve Games kind of like cheated me out of a few extra dollars. And this one I did on another video, this is called Unpacking. It's in this like brown cardboard slipcover. But this is a puzzle game where you just like help someone unpack after a move and it's like the times they move during their life. So like when they're a child, then when they're a teenager, then they're like in college or whatever. And you can like parse the narrative of this person's life from the things you're unpacking. So like maybe you unpack when you move into like your significant other's apartment and then the next time you move like it's just like a toothbrush and some clothes and like they broke up. So it's supposed to be really cool. I love that cover with the little pig, but you can see what it looks like on the back here. Very simple looking aesthetic, very simple mechanics, but apparently this is a fantastic game and I was thrilled to pick it up. I love stuff like this, like quirky, interesting ideas. We need more of this, more of this, less like Call of Duty. <laughs> then the last game in the collection. I always say this is done by like Nippon Ichi Software, NIS. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I don't know, they published it. This is Eurokill. And I have not heard much about this from many people. You can still get it out there, but it's a mixture of a visual novel and a shmup. So I'm kind of like, I don't know how this is gonna work, but you can see here, it's just like visual novel crap and then shoot them up. And once again, excuse the long fingernails, guys. I'm a, I do classical guitar. I have to have long fingernails. They're just on those three fingers. But there you go, you can see it. This is supposed to be pretty decent. I hope the visual novel part's interesting enough to like push me through to want to do the, the shoot them up sections, but we'll find out. I do love the artwork of this. It looks really cool. I said, never played it. All right, guys, that's my entire PS5 collection. 34 games, I kind of counted, but then I forgot what it was. <laughs> if you made it this far into the video, I really appreciate it. If you liked the content, please comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. And if you really like the content and you're interested in maybe getting your name read out loud in a video or your name listed in a video, or if you want to sponsor a segment or if you want to pick a game out of my backlog for me to play and review, consider becoming a channel member. There's some really cool perks in there. I didn't even know channel memberships were a thing until Google notified me. And so many people asked me if I had a Patreon. I was like, I'll just do the Google membership thing. It'll be easier. <laughs> so if you really like the content, consider, like I said, becoming a channel member. New videos every Wednesday, gameplay videos, collection videos on Saturdays. 
And once again, guys, I really appreciate it. Also, follow me on Twitter and Facebook and stuff. There's some good like interaction there and you get notified of new videos and you can contact me that way. Once again, thanks guys. I'll catch you next time.